Should you buy a car during this pandemic? And if so, where should you get it? Just head over to... Hey everybody, welcome to Make Money From Home. Today, we'll be analyzing the recession in the car industry step by step and telling you if now is the right time to buy a car. We'll also be looking at exclusive, legitimate statistics companies are using to sell cars for cheaper and how you can find the best buy. It's going to be a good one, so make sure to stay to the end. And now let's jump right into the video. The global pandemic is clearly affecting a lot of industries and companies right now, and everyone's talking about the stimulus package. Stocks, trades, cruise lines, which is great. However, not many people are making videos or giving information about the potential recession in the car industry. At the moment, production is shut down, alongside that factory after factory are shutting down too, and supply chains are disrupted, all because of lower demand, especially with the quarantine going on right now. So in this video, we're going to talk about the state of the industry and how we can benefit as consumers when buying a used car. Finally, we're also going to be covering how we can all benefit with certain incentives which are being applied to new cars. It's going to be a good video, so sit back, grab your notebook and some popcorn, and let's get started. So first, let's talk about the state of the auto industry at this current time. Everyone knows that new cars are getting more and more expensive, and it's not feasible for the average middle class person to be buying brand new cars, so more people are leaning towards used cars instead. When it comes to used cars, dealers know that this is going to be a huge profit center for them. Used cars typically have higher margins and bigger profit margins than new cars because you can only sell a new car within a certain price range without having to take a loss. In fact, new cars are sometimes even the biggest loss leaders at a dealership just to get that customer to finance the vehicle and add a lot of add-ons which are available. However, used cars are different. The dealer is taking these used cars at different prices and at much lower prices, typically wholesale, and they're marking them up and selling them to the customer at retail or whatever the market price is. Used cars originate from trade-ins, so when an individual goes to the dealership and they want to get rid of their old car and buy a new one, they typically don't want the hassle of selling it privately, so they just trade it in. Or they're coming in from auctions, which are typically wholesale, or they're coming from rental companies that are selling their current fleet, or maybe lease returns when people don't want to purchase their vehicle and just want to give it back and get into a new lease or a different vehicle. So they return the lease and the dealer cleans the car and then upsells it as a used car on the lot. However, the central point of this whole video is that used car sales are plummeting, according to Mannheim's. Used prices, they're down 11.8% in the first half of April alone. Used car auctions are having prices fall significantly because people are simply not going to them and supply is outpacing demand by a lot. So used car prices plummeting creates pressure on the automotive industry in four different ways, which we'll cover now. Quickly, before we move on, if you're enjoying this video, please make sure to subscribe, leave us a like, and let us know what videos and tips you'd like us to cover in our next video. We would love to hear from you. The first way is that new car prices have to be discounted heavily in order to make room for new inventory to come in. If a dealer is sitting on 2020 models or even potentially 2019 models that still haven't moved, they need to make room on their lot for 2021 models. They have two ways of doing this by offering crazy incentives, which we're going to talk about at the end of this video, or by discounting the MSRP pretty significantly. The second way is through creating pressure on rental companies. Rental car companies sell their used fleet to the public or to wholesale after they're done renting the car. The problem is they can't offload their inventory at the price they've expected because the used market is going down so much, which is creating tons of losses in that industry. As a matter of fact, if you're watching this video right when we upload it, Hertz is actually fighting bankruptcy at this current time, and they might go bankrupt. How crazy is that? The third way is by creating pressure through lease residual values. If you don't know what a lease residual value is, let me tell you, it's just what the car will be worth at the end of the lease. These different companies have depreciation charts. Therefore, they know exactly what they think the car will be worth at the end of the three-year lease. However, they didn't expect there to be a quarantine and used car prices to be discounted so much. Just to give you some perspective, GM is sitting on $30.4 billion worth of leased cars that have an expected value. However, that's going to cause potentially billions of losses if those cars are sold significantly under residual value. A similar thing applies to Ford. 
Ford has $27.6 billion worth of leases on the road right now from last year. So, as mentioned, those financing arms are expected to incur billions of dollars of losses. Finally, the fourth way that used car prices are declining and affecting the automotive industry is obviously through dealership earnings. As we said earlier, sometimes cars are sold as a loss leader. It's just to acquire the customer and get service and financing and warranties. However, there's still sometimes a profit to be made on new cars, although the margin is very small. This is still going to affect dealership earnings. The next part of the video is talking about how to buy a used car, especially during this time right now. Because demand is very low right now, this puts you watching in the literal driver's seat as the consumer, meaning that they need to sell a car more than you need to buy one. What you want to do is go out to a website where it shows you how long the car's been in the lot or the dealer inventory. So you might want to check out cargurus.com. That's a great platform. The team here at Make Money From Home highly recommend it. You also want to see the price history of the car how long they've had it, and how much it's been discounted. The longer the car sits on a lot means the more the dealership is paying interest in terms of financing that car, meaning they're losing profit on that accrued interest and they have to move that inventory, otherwise it's going to go to auction. However, auctions are actually getting crushed right now because inventory is outpacing demand. So that's your first advantage in dealing in this environment. Another way is very simple and effective. Simply walk away. If they want to sell you the car, great. If they don't, hey, it's no big deal, just walk away. If they really want to sell you the car, they'll call you, trust me. Yeah, maybe a day or two later, they'll call and say, hey, we know you were looking at this car. Well, we're gonna give you even a bigger discount. We'll work something out. And that's when you can start to negotiate. Number three is you want to line up your financing before you get to the dealership. That way you'll know what your budget is and what your payment's gonna be and what your APR or your interest rate is. If the dealer can beat it with their financing, great, go ahead and take it. If not, use yours. But you never want to be pressured into a deal that you don't want to take. Always remember that. Moving on to number four, it's important you don't trade in your car or vehicle during this time because there's no incentive for dealers to take your car at a reasonable price or a reasonable value because they're sitting on so much inventory anyway that they're going to lowball the heck out of you. So don't trade in your car is what we recommend. Instead, try selling it privately. There's a million different websites where you can do that. Moving on, if a used car is not for you, let's check out some of the new car deals that are going on right now, which could spark your interest, so make sure to keep watching. Before we move on, I'm going to give you a little challenge. You have five seconds to subscribe, like, and comment done. The winner will be mentioned in our next video. Are you ready? Five, four, three, two, one. Time's up. Remember to do everything if you want that special shout out. If you're in the market for a new car, you've decided that going used is not for you, there's a lot of incentives going on right now in terms of new car deals. Do we recommend buying a new car? Probably not at the moment. Financially, it doesn't make a lot of sense because of the depreciation hit you're going to take driving it off the lot. Typically, you're going to lose about 30% within the first couple years. However, there are a lot of incentives going on right now, so listen closely. A lot of financing arms of these car manufacturers are creating incentives in terms of payment deferrals and also grants. You might be asking, what does that mean? Let's take a look at some examples now. Ford is actually offering to make your first three payments for you. Yes, you heard me right, literally. They're going to make your first payments for you. So if your payment's 400 bucks a month, you have 1200 right there for the first three months. And then they're going to defer your payments for the next three months, meaning that for the first six months, you basically have no car payment. Now listen to this. If you lose your job during or due to the pandemic, Genesis will make up to six months of payments for you. And they're also offering 0% financing on their G70 product, which has been rated a great vehicle. GM is also offering 0% for 84 months. Honda's offering a thousand bucks toward the purchase of a new vehicle and three months of payment deferral. Kia is offering 75 months of 0% and Volkswagen has the best one of all. They're going to defer payments for six months and you're going to get 0% interest for up to 72 months. How awesome is that? These are just some of the many examples, so make sure you do your research. So should you go buy a new car if you're offered deferred payments and 0% financing? Well, if you're able to invest the money, then go for it. 
However, you have to take the depreciation into account. If this is a car you're going to keep forever until the wheels fall off, then buying new may make sense. It might work out fine. We'll look more into that in future videos. So did you enjoy today's video? Would you like to see more? Well, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss more videos of how to make money working from home and much, much more. Check out this video and I'll see you soon. Take care.